People have been yelling at me, scolding me, really, really just politely asking if I would review the first episode of The Penguin on Max and give my thoughts. And since I'm such a weak, cowardly individual, I gave in, of course. And so here they are, my spoiler-free thoughts on the first episode of The Penguin. If you didn't know, The Penguin is a direct sequel to Joel Schumacher's Batman and Robin. There's also plenty of Christopher Nolan callbacks, and it takes a lot of inspiration from the old Adam West TV series. Really all of the previous Batman movies are accounted for in this. They're all part of the same cinematic universe, except for The Batman, which came out just a year or so back by Matthew Reeves. Matt Reeves, some call him. If you like honest, hard-hitting journalism, I would request you subscribe to the channel because I put out movie reviews, TV show reviews, really anything entertainment all the time on the channel would love to have you stick around. Now, of course, I'm full of shit. This has nothing to do with any of those things I talked about. This is in the Matt Reeves universe. It's part of his crime cinematic universe, I think they're calling it. And this really is kind of like a Sopranos Godfather sort of situation with the Penguin. A one hour plus episode getting to know this crime boss and how he's going to hopefully rise to the ranks as one of the big bads Batman will surely go up against again. If you're looking for a fast paced knuckle brawling balls to the wall action vehicle, this is certainly not the case. We have a somber slow moving affair here, but I never found it tedious. I never found it boring or tiresome. It's just taking its time in a very interesting way. I will say first impression was honestly not great. Even though we have a beautiful opening wide shot of the penguin looking out the window, his name Oswald Cobb in this, I'll always call him Oswald Cobblepot from the Tim Burton films, but Oswald Cobb staring out the window at what is left of Gotham after Batman was done tearing it to pieces, going after criminals. We cut to a collection of different news video on TV. And this is a really jarring contrast from that opening shot with the beautiful visuals. Now we have these high res, really bright TV screens of different news reports. And they're talking about the Riddler and they're talking about other characters. And it's honestly coming off a little cheesy to me. But this thankfully is the only time I will feel that way because the rest of the episode has a very cinematic quality to it. I just really wish they wouldn't have gone the trope, the old boring stale way of having news articles and reporters tell you what's been going on in Gotham all these years. It hasn't even been years. Really, this takes place directly after the Batman is done. The town is still very much getting over the flooding. You got different factions of people that have no housing. They're getting food. FEMA's involved. Falcone has been killed, courtesy of the Riddler. And what's left is a power struggle between these different mob bosses trying to decide the best route to make up the loss of their merch that is now floating at the bottom of Gotham Harbor. Colin Farrell reprising his role as Oz, AKA Penguin, and he does waddle a lot in this one. We find out he's got like a gnarled up foot, so he's really over the top going like this. Scratch, 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 scratch. He doesn't do that yet. I'm just waiting for him to get like punched wrong in the throat. So he's like, ah, wh wh what happened to my voice? Squawk, oh, is the Batman here? Wah, 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 wah. Eats a fish. <laughs> I don't know why, but it feels good on the throat. We gotta come up with a gritty, realistic way for me to start eating fish and acting more like a penguin. Joining him on his misadventure is Victor, a young kid who's got his whole life ahead of him, so why not take him under his wing, penguin wing, and show him how things get done in the city streets of Gotham. How this story is being set up for me is saying, hey, Oz is gonna be trying to get power and he's gonna have to deal with the Falcone family. Specifically, Sophia, played by Kristen Milotti. And I love this actress. She's always been great in everything I've seen her in. No exception here. She's ruthless and a tad unhinged, coming straight out of Arkham to square things with the family. By the way, if you appreciate me covering this show, I plan on doing every episode moving forward and I'll probably go into spoilers on those videos. Just kind of gauge how this one does first and then I'll be on my way. But I plan on watching the series. It's very good so far. I really like the first episode. We got some compelling stuff. It's tricky when you're following a villain to kind of have any sympathy for him or just like get on board with the cause at all. But Colin Farrell is both ruthless as this character and has this kind of like sad clown mystique behind it. There's a soberness to this performance that I really appreciate. It's not over the top, it is grounded, but he has that gangster vibe straight out of Joe Pesci from Casino, just downplayed for sure. 
And when this episode winds down, we have a clear direction that this show is going to go in. And I find it fascinating. I like the idea of this mob boss rising the ranks, having to start out small, make deals, get dirt on people, move people around. Like he's setting up the board and he's making some of the moves early to see how they shake out at the end. It's a Game of Thrones sort of a situation and I'm here for it. Again, it's very cinematic. It is matching the Batman. It's got those orange color hues, kind of like old school diehard movies. I like that shit. And the score is just a solid you have a great ensemble cast so far everybody's working for me and i and again i really liked colin farrell in this i like colin farrell in most movies he's in he's an underrated actor i've been saying this for years so it's great that he's got a show to uh, really showcase his talents and i came into this one not that excited the batman for me was a solid movie and i've never watched it again i tried watching it with my family and they were kind of bored and didn't want to continue and honestly like, yeah, it, it's a knockoff of Seven, but with superheroes, kind of. So I'll just watch Seven again if I want my fix on that. It was a fine film, though, and I do like the universe. Just not really something I need to rewatch. The Penguin, however, fits really well into this. I didn't think I would be into a film about this character, but they're selling it for me. I'm on board, and I'm excited to see where it goes. Let me know your thoughts, though, in the comments below. Was this just a little too tedious for you? Didn't go anywhere exciting? Or you like me and you were won over pretty early on and you're excited for what's next? Leave a comment. Please like the video and subscribe if you haven't. I post movie reviews. I cover TV shows. Really anything entertainment all the time over here. Would love to have you stick around. Plenty of fun content coming up. If you love what I'm doing, maybe think about showing support and just leaving a super thanks right under this video. It's just a, it's a click away. And then you just give a couple bucks, say, hey, Adam, thanks, appreciate it. Or you can become a patron at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. I have a bunch of fun vlogs coming up. I'm editing them right now. My family and I went to Disney World. We went to Typhoon Lagoon. It was an experience. One that I can't wait to share. All right, hopefully I see you next time.